Hey guys, um, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, my sketches and my sketch process and my recent sketches. Um, so I've recently been under a lot of medical um, pressure and um, I haven't really been able to sit for long periods of time on my desktop where I usually do a lot of my portrait rendering and painting. So I've been able to um, use my Cintiq and um, just uh, sit on my comfortable chair and relax um, and sketch while laid back. It's a lot easier on my back. Um, so I've been doing a lot of these sketches and exploring sketching a lot and it is difficult. I truly believe that sketching is much more difficult than rendering. Um, it's just rendering, you, you don't have to count your brush strokes, you don't have to do a lot of stuff, you have to you know, manage blocking in for a little bit, but that's easy once you have a good idea of what you're doing with your lines, I mean with your with your proportions, but when it comes to sketching, yeah, you do have your rough line layer, which is what I'm working on right now, uh, but you have to count your lines, you have to make sure rotation is absolutely spotless, you have to preserve the style, you have to preserve the proportions, anatomy is always just on, uh, under a lot of pressure for performance, anatomy is really important. Um, it's right up there front and center and uh, you don't have a lot of room for failure the way you do in a, uh, in a portrait and then you can just liquefy your way out of a bad proportion rotation and then fill in the rest with some paint work. This is not like that. You can't rotate, you can't liquefy your way out of the mistake. Um, you have to just restart. Uh, and then there's all the anatomy to manage and making sure that the, 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 the form feels fluid and the rotation feels complete and the gesture feels natural not a fake um, kind of like mannequin gesture but a natural gesture and so what I wanted to do is tackle one of my biggest problems with sketching characters even when I render them eventually um, I always have a problem with costume and the design of the costume the look of the character and uh, their, their role, what, 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 what it is I'm really trying to achieve with the character's story and just their costume and their gesture and their expression, which are the three main uh, trinities, I guess, of, um, which is the trinity of, uh, you know, character design, expression, gesture, and costume. Um, and when you have a wonderful combination of the three, and it's not just random for random sake, like you'll have a lot of cool little whimsical drawings that you'll find, and it's just like this circular shaped character with two big eyes and a funny little beak nose mouth thing and wonderful colors and the character will just be cute and that's really it just like the Korok designs for those creatures but anything that isn't really human I refer to it as creature design so you don't have to deal with that trinity of character design but when you do have a character whose face is human who's, who's a humanoid of some kind you are uh, creating the feeling of a person a, a being a someone you can have a conversation with whereas a creature is something that you witness is a more of an animal a pet um, you have that separation of being so I take character design and costume design and character design very seriously because I'm creating something I'm gonna meet I'm creating someone I'm going to meet it's a someone and it's a lot of pressure on me to make sure that I do that right and I reflect the right uh, occupation and role and make sure that all of the the volume of the of the pieces that I'm piecing together are reading well from a distance. You have that inward read and that external read. Um, does it read well from a distance? Is it a cool character? Is it a memorable character? Can it? Would it be an iconic character in an anime or in a in a cartoon of some kind? Which I take very very seriously because these are my roots. I wouldn't say anime is my roots. I'd say cartoons are my roots in general. Um, uh, but uh, for this particular setup, I preserve the, 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 the stance because if I, ha if I had to study costume and I have to create a body for every new costume, I'm wasting my time. I, if this was really about costume design, then I would have just uh, uh, focused specifically on the costume. So I perfected the pose. I hated the face. Um, but again, I didn't want to meet the character in this particular study through the face. I wanted to meet them through the costume because, of course, that's my trouble area. So I tried to ignore the face and just move on to a nice combination of shapes, bodies of costume pieces, and then just move forward with that and see how much I can pull off in that small amount of time. So I kept and copy pasted the pose I, I generated with the legs, which I really like. I like the attitude. I like the thickness of the legs, the strength. 
um, kind of looks like a berserker, kind of would be the berserker in all of its roles. So I have a jungle character, more of a, a, a less of a noble armor knight character, and then I have the knight character. Um, uh, so like the hired sword and the knight, those are just two different character uh, t topics for me. Um, so after kind of figuring out a really, really rough draft of what I wanted each costume to do, I'll, I'll try to make sure each time if I'm representing the right occupation. So, um, the jungle character would have more natural, uh, fabrics and natural combination of materials. Uh, the berserker character, um, that is kind of a hired sword wouldn't really be commission, wouldn't be commissioning the court blacksmith or the court, like, um, uh, uh, tailor or something like that. They, they'd make their own armor themselves, so that's why it looks a little bit more rough. And then if you have the knight, they would commission the court blacksmith or the, or the king's blacksmith um, to work on their armor for them, so it would have a lot more symmetry. Uh, so I kept symmetry low for rogue-type characters and symmetry high for religious or royal. Um, and uh, that's why she has some kind of religious aspect to her, the jungle character you see in the middle eventually. Um, so she has like some sort of shaman type, religious, chosen one type, uh, guardian of a shrine, like armored guardian of a shrine, but still very religious or representative. So that's why I kept her uniform very symmetrical. But the rogue is more of like a, a wanderer or a traveling character or, um, part of a great, uh, rally of, of, uh, of, of also hired swords or hired guns or mercenaries. Um, so she wouldn't really uh, need symmetry. She doesn't need to impress anyone. She has pieces of different salvaged items after a battle. Um, so those are the kinds of things that go through my mind. Am I really convinced would she really, you know, have this perfect armor? Um, would she have put it to good use somehow? Um, how should, would she have used it um, when she's holding her, her, her uh, dominant hand and with her sword? How does her armor conflict with her? Um, so, and then, and then finally I decided on everything for each role and then I wanted to clean it up. And so for me to, it's just because I'm a portrait artist and I have a portrait background, I had to get the portrait down. I, I knew that rushing the costume would prioritize costume and it definitely did. I had great costumes towards the end. I really love these characters. I could totally see them in the Miyazaki movie, which for me being my own worst critic was a lot saying a lot. So I really liked the characters designs. Uh, maybe just the middle one the most. Um, uh, other characters that were sort of inspired by a game I played a long time ago called Dragon Nest. Um, so yeah, I could see them as like an MMORPG or something like that uh, costume that you can buy in a store uh, for like online game. But the one in the middle really felt like a Ghibli character, uh, which is what I always try to do. I like to have a nice balance between Disney influence with the anatomy and then Ghibli um, with the face and then the, the, the expression style and then anime in general. And then, of, car of course, cartooning with the volume and, and the animatable uh, combination of shapes. So it has to look like you can animate because it, larger pieces, larger shapes are easier to animate and pull off in a motion on, uh, on a flat 2D. Uh, so that's kind of what I always go for. And I had to capture the face for me to really be convinced this is a character I, I, I like. This is a character I can meet. Because when we meet people, we look at their faces. Um, so I, I liked her face. I liked what I did with the eyes and the eyebrows. I liked the volume. And then I went on to clean up the, the, the body. Now this is something that keeps happening to me no matter what I do. It looks great as a rough draft. And then I start cleaning it up and I hate the costume. And I wonder why did it look so good as a rough? I, I was, it was okay for me to move on to cleaning it up. I mean, it would look that good to me as a rough. Why isn't it looking good to me right now? You have to understand and I have to understand and remember that when I am working on this piece and I'm cleaning up the lines, I'm cleaning up and starting with the heavier, thicker lines first. And as I'm doing that, I wonder why it's not reading as this amazing sketch yet. It's that yet question. Why isn't it good yet? Um, and that question causes me so much stress as I'm drawing because I absolutely hate what's happening to my mindset. I'm, I'm, I'm not enjoying art anymore because I'm looking at it in such a way where I'm judging it as I'm drawing it and that really upsets the, 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 the workflow. So I said, just trust the rough draft. You chose these shapes for a reason. They read from a distance, clean up, keep cleaning up, 
keep applying detail, break larger shapes into smaller shapes, fix as you go. A lot of mistakes aren't visible till you clean up, by the way, because the cluster of rough sketches together helps you forgive bad pieces. And when you start cleaning them up, the cluster's gone and the cluster doesn't hide bad pieces from you. And bad pieces can be this awkward combination between shapes. It can be a flattened, un, uh, like low volume uh, body part or something like that. It could be anything. Um, and uh, once you start cleaning up, you see it for what it's worth. And that's why I said there's no room for error because everything is out in the open. And I truly believe the best of us, the best of the artists um, in the world are animators. They have, they are under so much scrutiny and not only do they have to have the best lines and the best volume, it has to move. It has to be proportion that can rotate on an axis, which is extremely difficult to pull off. Um, just right now where I place the eyebrow to be forward, so ahead towards the left of the eye, our left, um, means that the brow bone is in front of the eyeball, is, is ahead of the eyeball. The eyeball is recessed. So when I rotate the head, I'll have a glabella. I know that's really complicated and abstract to describe, but that's what animating and having perfect proportion is like. You have to animate like you're, like you have to draw like you're on a, uh, on a 3D model and you're sketching on the 3D model. Do you understand? Which is a great exercise, by the way, if you guys have Portrait Studio, pose on Portrait Studio the mannequin and sketch over it. It'll, it'll really help you pick up on the slight little um, uh, just descriptions of overlap, stacking, and rotation. Really, really amazing. You, you wouldn't think a line is there, but it really is, and it's an actual edge that you forget and you forget to use because you don't actually have a, a vocabulary for it. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm uh, duplicating all of these characters and extending the canvas and I will be just cleaning them all up and just laying them side by side. Um, uh, so sketches tend to look better when they're side by side. It's like, it's like when they say women look be better together as a group. <laughs> women look more beautiful uh, as a group when they're standing beside each other. Like it's actually scientifically proven or something. I don't know if it's been... Um, uh, debunked or anything like that but hopefully my sketches look better <laughs> when they're beside each other uh, so that's typically what I'm doing here um, I'm just laying them by each other so that I could also keep in you know keep it in front of me if I'm overlapping jungle artifacts from like the jungle theme on a, the wrong theme I'll know what I'm doing um, and whether or not I keep certain parts uh, mirrored like the ear armor I keep that between the royal knight and the berserker the rogue um, or like the armored Merc, and um, I, I, I like that because, yeah, they're from the same era, they're all from the same world, they're just ge geologically and religiously and um, class-wise, politically uh, separated, but an ear armor is still valid for um, characters that have really, really high ear orbit and elf ears that expand past the edge of their head, and I'm sure in battle they get nicked off or cut off, uh, so I thought ear armor makes a lot of sense. Um, and, uh, so I kept that between the knight and the berserker, um, and that's pretty much like what I mean when I say I keep them beside each other so I can keep track of what I'm layering on top. Like, I want these characters to eventually be characters I use in a, in a, um, like a game format or a story format or something like that. Uh, so that's that's kind of what I'm going for at the moment is in my mind at least I like to imagine how they will be in a game or a comic book or an animation or whatever they're used for any any game or animation or comic book wants characters that are believable that are loved by their artists um, every game benefits from characters that are beloved and um, are, are taken care of or respected by their by the artists they drew them like you can tell that drew them you can tell um, the love is there when, when characters are uh, uh, just really really adored the way they design cloud and from Final Fantasy versus the newer characters we see in Final Fantasy games it just feels like cloud really did have a, a, a like a special place in the character's heart or the way Totoro was sketched um, in My Neighbor Totoro. Uh, it's it's really, really beloved the way they sketch. I'm not saying that Ghibli movies today have less love. All Ghibli movies have amazing characters. And I don't think um, directors really allow any of these characters to be animated until they are absolutely in love with the character. Um, and that's what you really have to do. You have to love the character. I've been drawing a lot of short, stout, angry girls with... Um, 
like lots of uh, uh, just horns, really angry, bold looking characters. I'm mostly inspired by my cat. I, I, I noticed that her face proportions really inspire me, the big eyes, the tiny mouth, um, and, uh, and just like big attitude. Uh, kind of short and stout, so my cat's really short, but she looks kind of chunky because of her long hair. And so when she kind of makes herself bigger, she kind of just expands in volume when she's kind of just like huffing and puffing, ready to like zoom across the living room. So that's what I kind of try to pick up, that really angry, puffy chest, um, but tucked in chin. And I really, really like that um, with that specific character trope that specific character personality. So I like to separate trope from personality. You can have a berserker that's more silly, uh, or you can have a, a silent, angry berserker. Um, it's really just about, you know, what your what the personality is doing. So there's layers to the to the character's personality that is represented by costume expression and uh, gesture. Um, and uh, a trope doesn't always mean personality. It, it, it's an extra little level of design you have to think about. Um, you can have a perfectly big uh, brawn type character, like I think his name is Brawn um, in League of Legends. I forgot. Is it Brawn? Um, no, it's not. It's the guy with the mustache, and he's a big, 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 tough guy. And then you have Scion, who's also a big, tough tank. Um, but they have completely different personalities. One is a joyous Santa Claus type character and one is a complete angry nutcase. Um, and that's, that's what I want you guys to remember is that trope doesn't mean personality. Trope comes a lot with role and comes from body type. It comes from design choice and fashion. It's all external when it comes to trope and internal trope language is the personality. Um, uh, and I wouldn't really even call it trope after that. I just call it their, you know, that they're, 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 they're just who they are as a person, as a being. Uh, so I continue into larger shapes versus smaller shapes. I try to get a good idea of what's happening with um, hands and positions of the hands. I've, I feel like I've improved a lot with hands, definitely from my uh, more wispy drawings recently um, that I've been doing on my after hours. Uh, one of my viewers recommended I added um, two big eyes uh, to her poncho, uh, which actually looks really, really great. Um, and I, I really like that for the middle girl. Um, and then I move on to just adding more detail. And again, I got over that weird initial, oh, the sketch is looking terrible, even cleaned up, because you're gonna have to give it, give the large a chance to complement the small. So you're going to have the micro detail, which is hand bandages and little rough brush strokes to represent fur. And then you're going to have the larger shapes that <clears throat> uh, bring it all together because you can't just have a tons and tons of detail overlap. I now move on to the other character, which is uh, she gave me so much trouble with the eyes, like uh, the whole face. I just hated the face and I, I used to just push past it and force a face in, but um, I stopped. I, I started realizing that maybe I'm getting all of this bad feedback because I essentially, maybe, mystically, I don't know, some superior force of knowledge that lives in my brain tells me I don't want to draw the rest of the face. I feel like the knight would have half the face missing um, and that I'm really half-assing drawing the, the rest of the face because I really essentially, inherently, subconsciously, unconsciously don't want to draw it. Um, and I, uh, I, I guess that's just what worked out. So eventually I, I, I keep the eyes. I like what the eyes are doing. I like their angry snobby look because she is a knight. She is a royal. She had to work really hard to get where she is. And she was probably raised, um, to, to be proud of her lineage and her knighthood. Um, so I, I kept the eyes really proud, really judgmental. And I kind of gave the body more sass and used liquify to kind of push it over, but just with the rough sketches, of course. Um, and then eventually I hid the face and continued with the armor. Um, for the armor, it's not something I have a lot of experience with, uh, but I wanted big armor that kind of, uh, if the person was attacked in their body, the armor would kind of throw the, the sword off trail, kind of like big little um, deters or an orbit, something like a Venus orbiting around the body, but obviously in more appealing shapes, like the triangular shapes from shoulders to groin. 
uh, something fashionable but still serving in the same purpose. So big metal, um, kind of like sheets of metal, like really rough metal expanding past the silhouette or around orbiting the body to kind of deflect any kind of arrow or something like that just to be out there like whiskers to capture or maybe even if it wobbles a little bit will warn the, uh, the, the, the knight something is about to um, approach or something like that and give them time to react. I think armor always, I have trouble with it because I'm just so dang bored of all the armor we've seen throughout history and no one really tries new and innovative ways because while well, we stopped using armor altogether and we started you know guns introduced a whole new way of fighting and melee kind of fell in the back for innovation um, but as artists we have to keep imagining like the world kept armor and guns were never introduced how would that affect the way we dress up for melee for prepare for that kind of damage uh, that can be caused in a scene a lot of my viewers are very interactive in this stream as well, so I asked them, what kind of armor do you want me to try? And they said, oh, try some crazy leg armor. Um, and that's something I went for, crazy leg armor. I wanted to like uh, reinforce some, some of the, the power in her legs. She has that deflector towards the top and that really, really rough ox or, or, um, or kind of like buffalo skin that just is around her uh, shoulders and probably a very wintry area very northern so that's what she's armored up for um obviously this is not a ceremon ceremonial armor it's a full-on uh utility um she's got everything set up and all those extra little deflectors around the chest and the low hanging shoulder shoulder pads to protect the armpits this is all utility it's not really pre it's preparing for battle whereas ceremonial armor doesn't really prepare for battle I wanted to give her her helmet. I think I do end up keeping her helmet. Actually, no, I don't. I think I get rid of it. Um, but I really, when it came down to a lot of these character designs, something that stood in the way, which I need to tackle on a separate day, is hairstyle. It's a whole other thing that helps uh, dress up characters. And it just did not work for me this time. And I just wanted to avoid hairstyles altogether and keep the headgear on. Because if we are talking about characters that are exposed to the weather, exposed to the elements, they really would not be worried about their hair. A quick braid and get it out of the way and then wear some kind of headgear. Makes a lot more sense than big ridiculous anime protagonist hairstyles. Uh, so covering the head made a lot of sense and then of course covering the mouth up made even more sense. And it, I really started to like the design. So it's, an, it's a combination of listen, listening to my instincts about what I wanted pushing past fear of it looking not good or looking terrible and just trusting my rough draft and that if it reads on the rough draft it'll read better uh, once it's clean even more uh, uh, of an appealing design once everything is clean and all your lines are counted I tried not to do a lot of recursive lines I think recursive lines are heinous and they're horrible and they ruin the drawing and again it's all about drawing something that looks like it can be animated um, I did not finish that last a night. For some reason, I really like the rough lines. I don't know why. I just like when the when the sketch isn't finished and you can see like an X-ray of the blueprint underneath. So I kind of just kept that for the delivery draft, um, like for the final draft uh, for the rewards. I kind of wanted you guys to see what goes into keeping some of the rough lines visible because I'm always throwing the rough lines in the in the back once I'm done. The rough lines are not visible at the end. Um, sometimes I erase them completely and just keep the clean lines. Um, and uh, that's kind of what I did here. I, I, I just uh, uh, threw a lot of the lines back there. And uh, I just wanted to keep one of the lines clean. Um, I, I do revisit this after another stream interruption. I do revisit it and that's when I decide that the arm really needs a lot of work. The helmet was way too much. I think her helmet would have already been made of uh, some kind of um, um, mail, ma mail, is that right? Um, is that, no, chain mail, yeah, chain mail or some kind of mithril according to Tolkien or something like that. So I, I don't think she would have been in danger of getting stabbed in the head or something like that. But I'm sure if in the middle of battle, in the heat of battle, there should be some kind of helmet over top. Uh, the chainmail with even a bigger orbit, like a Saturn type, uh, not Saturn, Venus. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know my planets very well. Um, and uh, that thing would also have given her some kind of extra deterrent um, around the helmet. And it just feels like this big, colossal, angelic knight type. Uh, the colors I see is definitely white for the... Um, 
for the uh, for the armor, uh, for the fur, um, and then for the for the far right, for the far left, a berserker, a wanderer character, kind of like less cleaned up. I see a lot of earthy colors because, of course, a ranger type doesn't really have those expensive colors. So lots of reds and blues on the knight, um, and lots of gold and silver and pure uh, metals. And then the jungle, of course, character would have a lot of green, maybe some painted skin. Maybe that jungle elf is in itself a completely different kind of elf. Maybe they have green or blue skin um, naturally. But I wouldn't have given her fleshy tones if she's trying to camouflage in a really thick, uh, uh, warm jungle, like a equatorial jungle or something like that. Um, and uh, that's it. I hope you guys have a good insight as to the madness that is my sketching style. I do try to keep some kind of order in my thinking, but at the end of the day, you're really is, it, it is a, a series of, of cause and effect, fix your problems as you go, and a lot of problem solving. You give yourself a number of problems with your design and desire, and you correct it as you go. So don't feel too much pressure to perform, especially speed-wise. Take your time. These took me all together, I think, five hours of sketching. By no means do you need to sketch as fast as a time lapse. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you guys next month. Bye.